Hello guys, welcome to Magic Math Stat. In previous video, I have explained how to get the limit expression for E or Euler's number. Now, if you haven't watched my previous video yet, I am putting a link here in the i button and also in the description. Please watch that video, then come to this one to understand it better. Now, in today's video, I will tell you how to get the polynomial formula for e to the power x. And in this video, I will be using two very important theorems, one of which is binomial expansion theorem and second one is extended binomial expansion theorem. Now, the binomial expansion theorem says a plus b whole to the power n equals to a to the power n plus nc1 a to the power n minus 1 b plus n c 2 a to the power n minus 2 b square the sum continues up to plus b to the power n. Now in this theorem the condition is the n the power is a positive integer and what if it is not a positive integer then comes the bi extended binomial expansion theorem which says a plus b whole to the power n equals to a to the power n plus n a to the power n minus 1 b plus n multiplied by n minus 1 by 2 factorial a to the power n minus 2 b squared plus n multiplied by n minus 1 multiplied by n minus 2 by 3 factorial a to the power n minus 3 b cube and it goes up to infinite terms. Now if you do not know these things, well tell me in the comments, I will make a video about it. In the previous video, you have seen that e equals to limit n tends to infinity 1 plus 1 by n whole to the power n. Now, from the binomial expansion theorem, we get, you can see it on the screen, 1 plus 1 by n whole to the power n equals to nc0 which is nothing but 1 plus nc1 1 by n plus nc2 1 by n square plus nc3 1 by n cube plus and the sum continues up to ncn 1 by n whole to the power n. So, we can write it under one summation which is summation ncr 1 by n to the power r and the limit of sum is r equals to 0 to n. And so, we get limit n tends to infinity 1 plus 1 by n whole to the power n equals to limit n tends to infinity summation n combination r or ncr 1 by n to the power r and the limit of sum is r equals to 0 to n. Now, you can see that there is a combination which is n combination r in the sum. So, I am going to break it. So, we get limit n tends to infinity and the sum and in the sum we get n factorial by r factorial multiplied by n minus r factorial and the total thing multiplied by 1 by n to the power r. Now, if you know binomial theorem then I am guessing that you also know how to multiply or divide the factorials. So, here if we divide n factorial by n minus r factorial, we get n multiplied by n minus 1 multiplied by n minus 2 multiplied by n minus 3 continuing up to n minus r plus 1 and the r factorial stays same 1 by n whole to the power r stays same and the limit and the sum all stays same. Now, in this part look at the red rectangle that is the upper part of the fraction in the sum. Now, you can see that this term is multiplication of r individual terms. One term is n, another is n minus 1, the next is n minus 2 and you get the idea. And also we have 1 by n to the power r. Now, you can see we can take each 1 by n and multiply it with the terms which are sitting above the fraction in the sum. And so we get the next step where the limit stays same, the sum and its limit stays same. Inside the sum it becomes n by n, then the next term is n minus 1 by n, then the next is n minus 2 by n and this is going on up to n minus r plus 1 by n. And the whole thing divided by r factorial. Well, in the next step, I will be breaking each subtraction in these red circles in two parts. And so, I get limit n tends to infinity, the summation with limit r equals to 0 to n and in the sum 1 multiplied by 1 minus 1 by n, the next multiple 
the next term is 1 minus 2 by n, the next one is 1 minus 3 by n and this goes up to 1 minus r minus 1 by n and this whole product is divided by r factorial. Now what if I put this limit in the expression and the first we get the sum which was from r equals to 0 to n it becomes from r equals to 0 to infinite because n is tending to infinity. So we know that as n tends to infinity any finite number divided by n tends to 0. So all these 1 by n, 2 by n, 3 by n and up to r minus 1 by n these all become 0 and so we get summation the limit is from r equals to 0 to infinity and in the sum we get 1 multiplied by 1 minus 0 the next one is also 1 minus 0 the next one is also 1 minus 0 and the last term also is 1 minus 0 the whole thing is divided by r factorial and I do not have to tell you that 1 minus 0 is nothing but 1. So in the upper part of the fraction we get 1 multiplied by 1 multiplied by 1 which is nothing but 1. So we get summation 1 by r factorial the limit is from r equals to 0 to infinity that is if we break the sum we get 1 plus 1 by 1 factorial plus 1 by 2 factorial plus 1 by 3 factorial plus dot 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 up to infinite term. So we get E equals to nothing but 1 plus 1 by 1 factorial plus 1 by 2 factorial plus 1 by 3 factorial plus up to infinite terms. Now let us focus on E to the power x. Let us see what is happening. Now we know that e equals to limit n tends to infinity 1 plus 1 by n whole to the power n. So e to the power x must be that thing whole to the power x and since x is independent of n and n is independent of x the limit comes out and it becomes limit n tends to infinity 1 plus 1 by n whole to the power nx. Well you might be thinking that now I can break it like the previous one but there is a problem. We do not know this nx the power is a positive integer or not. So first let that nx be a positive integer. So we can break it simply as the previous expression of e with a few simple changes. Since the power is nx now the uh, upper limit of the sum becomes nx and the combination becomes nx combination r or nx cr. Now we break the combination as previous case, we operate the factorials that is division as previous case and we get limit n tends to infinity the sum is uh, going from r equals to 0 to nx and in the sum we get nx the next term is nx minus 1 the next term is nx minus 2 the next one is nx minus 3 and up to nx minus r plus 1 this product divided by r factorial multiplied by 1 by n to the power r now as previous case we will take each one of the r1 by n's and divide the terms which is sitting above the fraction in the sum and we will get something like this. You can understand it because it is very similar to the previous one. Now we will break each of the terms sitting on the numerator of this big fraction like the previous case we get x multiplied by x minus 1 by n multiplied by x minus 2 by n the next one is x minus 3 by n and up to x minus r minus 1 by n. Now since here x is a positive integer nx should be equal or greater than n and since n is tending to infinity nx should be tending to infinity. So we get the sum starting from r equals to 0 and goes to infinity in the sum we get x multiplied by x minus 0 multiplied by x minus 0 and couple of x minus zeros. Now why we get x minus zeros like the previous one any finite number divided by n when n is tending to infinity it becomes 0 and x minus 0 is nothing but x so we get the multiplication of r x's that is finally we get summation from r equals to 0 to infinity x to the power r divided by r factorial and that is equals to nothing but 1 plus x by 1 factorial 
plus x square by 2 factorial plus x cube by 3 factorial and it is going on up to infinity. Now in this case we have only considered x as a positive integer. But what if x is not a positive integer? Maybe it is a positive fraction, negative fraction or a negative integer whatever it is. Now for those cases here is the derivation and in this derivation I am using the extended binomial expansion theorem that is limit n tends to infinity summation from r equals to 0 to infinity. Yes, because the extended binomial theorem was an infinite series and in the sum we get nx times nx minus 1 times nx minus 2 times nx minus 3 up to nx minus r plus 1 whole product divided by r factorial multiplied by 1 by n to the power r. And now we will do the same thing what we did in previous two cases. We get this thing then break each subtraction in the numerator of the fraction we get this one. So you get the idea now I am going to use the limit that is limit n tends to infinity and if I use that then 1 by n 2 by n 3 by n up to r minus 1 by n this all becomes 0 and we do not have to worry about the li uh, upper limit of the sum right now because the sum is already infinite sum. So finally we get summation from r equals to 0 to infinity x to the power r by r factorial that is if we break this summation we get 1 plus x by 1 factorial plus x squared by 2 factorial plus x cube by 3 factorial plus up to infinite terms. Now look at this something strange is happening for x as a positive integer and for x as not a positive integer in both cases we get the same result. So combining both we can write that e to the power x equals to 1 plus x by 1 factorial plus x square by 2 factorial plus x cube by 3 factorial up to infinite terms. So this is the famous polynomial form of e to the power x and we have seen that it is defined for x uh, as a positive integer or not. So we can say that this form is applicable for all real values of x. Now let us see if I what happens if I put x equals to 1. Well I get e equals to 1 plus 1 by 1 factorial plus 1 by 2 factorial plus 1 by 3 factorial plus dot dot dot. And if I put x equals to minus 1, then I get e to the power minus 1 equals to 1 minus 1 by 1 factorial plus 1 by 2 factorial minus 1 by 3 factorial plus up to infinite terms. So we have derived the polynomial form. We have seen two examples. Now, it's time for a surprise. Well, if you have noticed, we do not always face e to the power x directly. Sometimes we face the form a to the power x, like 2 to the power x, 3 to the power x, maybe 10 to the power x, 100 to the power x. So what happens in those cases? Let us see. We, we can write a to the power x as e to the power ln of a to the power x. Well, do not worry, ln is not something from another planet, ln is the log with natural base that is e. So we know the power uh, in the argument of a log comes out of the log. So we can write it as e to the power x times ln a and we know how to expand e to the power x right. So apply that for, uh, polynomial form here and we get 1 plus x ln a by 1 factorial plus x ln a whole square by 2 factorial plus x ln a whole cube by 3 factorial up to infinite terms and hence you get the final form. So guys if you have enjoyed this video, if you think this video was informative for you then please like the video it motivates me and please share this video as much as you can so others also can learn these things better. And if you have any suggestions or anything to say comment down below I will definitely read them and reply to them. And if you are not subscribed to my channel, please hit the subscribe button for more interesting videos. It is free, so why not? Thanks for watching guys. I will meet you in the next video.